Hey, welcome back. So um, this is cooking show style. You know how when they put it in the oven and then all of a sudden they take the finished one out of the oven but you haven't waited the 45 minutes for it to bake? Well, somehow I have wound almost all the threads. I left eight threads to um, wind while the camera is on so that you can see the end of the process. Um, so these are my last eight threads. See how this is all built up? There's a lot more on here. And again, this matches it would, it would be like if you were working up like this on the scarf. Okay. So here's my first two. Notice I'm still like aiming it for the wood. The empty space is in the wood, not on top of the yarn that's already here. There's that cross over under, around over under. One thing that happens is yarn in the summer absorbs the moisture and it gets much stickier. So it can be more challenging to um, keep threads from tangling in the summer. And I can feel the wetness a little bit on them and how they move. So there's six across again. And here's my last two threads. out of the way because otherwise that'll tangle with this if I'm not careful. All right, so somehow I have to take this warp off of the reel, keep it in order, keep it from tangling up and keep the threads relatively in line with each other. Like I don't want the threads slipping around. Some will get long, some will get short and then they'll just make a big mess. These are called choke ties. And I'm going to use this to secure the warp. A lot of weavers use a lot of these. I only use two or three. So I'm going to tie here and I'm going to make it a really tight tie. Tight, tight, tight. I go around the back and around the back. Okay, and I'm going to make another tight, tight, tight. A lot of beginning weavers want to make this into a double knot because they think it's going to be tighter. But what happens is when you make a knot on top of a knot, you're tightening the knot, but what you want to be doing here is you want to be tightening the loop. Um, so making a double knot actually stops that loop from getting tighter. Okay, I'm going to put this, these ties in in another couple places. The one up here is the really critical one. The ones further down aren't as important. But if I miss the one up top, um, I will make a big mess. Okay, so there's my warp. It's ready to take off. Um, and what I'm gonna do, and for experienced weavers, you'll notice that I am not putting anything into my cross yet, okay? Um, and I will do that later because I wanna keep what's going on here, but it'll be as the warp is coming off the loom. Um, and these sticks are gonna end up going where these pegs are so that this all stays, all the information in here I can still retrieve. Um, so the order of steps is I'm gonna cut down here. I'm gonna use my foot as a break. So I'm just gonna, every now and again, just kind of grab this with my foot so it doesn't unwind too quickly because I wanna keep it under tension. And if all of a sudden it winds and it gets away from me, the whole thing goes slack and um, it'll fall apart. So I'm gonna cut there. I'm gonna start with that. Okay. I'm gonna pull this tightly with my hands and cut through both layers right there. Okay, now I'm gonna do, this is called making a chain, and it's similar to crocheting. It's basically a set of slip knots, um, and it'll keep the warp consolidated. So I cross over there, I grab this, and then I pull that loop through here, 
okay? And notice I still have that warp under tension. And I'm just gonna start looping with it. There's my foot breaking when I need to. Oops. Notice I'm keeping it under tension. I'm grabbing the entire warp as if it's one thing. I'm not letting anything dangle as I'm doing this. I do wish I had a real little foot break. This has served me for decades. And it is one of my favorite pieces of weaving equipment. Okay, so there's my loop. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna pull here. Um, and what this makes possible is after the loom is threaded, and I'm taking all of this and I'm winding it onto the loom, it unwinds as I go. This kind of unravels. There's no knots in here. Um, so remember that cross? Remember the lease sticks? I'm gonna put the sticks in where the cross is so that I can remove it from these pegs. I'm gonna have my scissors handy. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in where this peg is. I'm gonna take the other stick, I'm gonna open this up, put that right there. I'm gonna meet them here. All right, now the one thing that doesn't really work for me about this reel is that these pegs are too close to the end of the warp. So um, this space isn't big enough for me. So usually what I'll do at this point while it's still under, it's still being held tightly here is I'll take these sticks and I'll just push them back a little bit. I'll take my fist and I am noticing, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna make a fist around this. Okay, so it's all secure. There we go. I'm gonna hold it secure. Take my scissors. And now I have a collection of 168 threads in the color order that I want. Totally organized and independent of the reel. And I do feel like, just take a, look at, just take a picture of it right there. I always feel like this is the prettiest part of the process. secure. I'm going to take these, the short threads go towards the reed. And I'm just going to take them at both ends. Now I'm ready to thread the reed.